Hello, welcome everybody. I'm Yokanon, your host for Blood Testimonies. Got a couple special guests here. We're doing things a little bit different. We have um, our, our guests that are actually going to be speaking in Spanish and, and translating for us so we can get the Latino community involved hearing about Torah. Please introduce yourselves to our, our lovely channel here. Uh, my name is uh, Victor Callejas. I'm uh, 32 um, and uh, yeah, love God. And yeah, this is my mother. <laughs> and my name is Elisa. The mic, I'm sorry. But... My but... name is Elisa. Uh, the same thing, I'm here for um, for Father. For father. <laughs> <sighs> so, um, what this channel is about is uh, several fold. We we're talking a little bit before we got the cameras up and running, but is we want to be able to show a love response to keeping Sabbath, to keeping the feasts keeping toward the statutes, the precepts, the commandments, the testimonies. What is about in your walk that draws, pushes, and pulls you where that's a must to have that relationship with this invisible God? What are the, what's been the love uh, and, and well, in, in episode one, I talk about my personal experience, strength, and hope. I, I talk about some pretty intimate, dark things that have happened um, and how God has reached into that darkness and has pulled me out. And if it weren't for keeping Torah, I wouldn't have been able to find the way back. I would have been lost in, in, uh, in a demonic world. I, I, I don't know if I've told you guys, I mean, if you watch ep that episode, I, I, I was literally possessed. I've, I've suffered from demonic uh, possession. And uh, God brought me out of it with a strong hand. Amen. You know, we just talked about that here uh, for Passover. So, um, how long, uh, you haven't been keeping Torah for the whole time, have you? Did you start out this way, or keeping Sabbath, or? When did you start to keep the Torah? Uh, más o menos unos cinco, seis años. About five, six years. Five, six years. Five, six years. Mm -hmm. Okay, and before that? Antes de eso? Fui cristiana por diez años. I was a Christian for ten years. Okay. Before that. All right. And before that, Catholic. Okay. About Catholic. So most of your life? Uh, Catholic. Mm -hmm. Most of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, since uh, pretty much birth, yeah, down in Mexico. Yep. Okay. Wow. So from Catholicism to Western Christianity, more, more, um, more uh, evangelical, what? Yeah, evangelical. I think, okay. uh, both of us started out at uh, Victory Outreach here in Santa Rosa. Okay. the Spanish ministry. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. And, and, and just throwing this out here uh, on this channel, we do not bash any denomination. We don't criticize how people walk out their faith. We all are at where we're at, when we're at. And the command is to love one another where you're at. Amen. You know, um, there's such a blessing when we come from not judging someone and, and criticizing that you need to be walking it this way, and if not, you're wrong and you're lost. We have 400,000 different denominations in Christianity, and most of them doing that, pointing the finger at them. You don't believe what we believe. You don't say the name this way. You don't uh, keep this day that way. If you believe that you keeping Torah, you're under the law. I mean, there's so much division within the church. I want to focus on what do we have where we can find common ground. Mm -hmm. We we have faith in one creator. Beautiful. Amen. What are the attributes of that one creator that we're striving to be like? Amen. And how Amen. is that affecting our lives and others around us? Amen. So let's start with your testimony. So what was your Catholicism experience like? Como era tu experiencia católica? Bueno, definitivamente católica me decía pero en sí yo no practicaba nada porque de niña me pasaron muchas cosas y yo estaba resentida con Dios. Me hablaban, iban a mi puerta religiones. No, yo soy católica. Les cerraba la puerta. Uh, no me decía católica como para que otras religiones no vinieran a molestarme. So I grew up uh, Catholic, you know, from from birth, you know, uh, with my parents in Mexico and everything as such. But I wouldn't say I was an actual 
Catholic, you know, by um, choice and more so by like convenience. So I would call myself Catholic, um, but I would have like just this deep uh, kind of animosity towards God where I didn't want to get to know him personally or on any other level like that. But I more so use it as a way to kind of um, deter other denominations, other kind of people, you know, kind of trying to throw their religion at me by saying, no, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Catholic. You know, I'm a devout Catholic. And that that's all I am. Uh, it's kind of closed minded. Yep. Cl very closed minded. OK, so at what point did you feel it's time to leave Catholicism and where did you go? Yo tuve muchos problemas al grado que me quise suicidar. Tomé pastillas para morir porque tenía problemas en mi matrimonio, problemas con mi hijo. Eh, y dije esto no es para mí, no es vida para mí. Um, eh, Dios sabía de qué manera llegar a mí. Le doy gracias a él haberse fijado en, en mí. Vio la oportunidad de, de que, no, más bien, él vio que yo necesitaba esa ayuda. Me mandó a un grupo de alcohólicos anónimos. No era alcohólica, nunca fui, he sido alcohólica, pero mis mi padre fue alcohólico. Todo el tiempo miré golpeando a mi mamá, todo el tiempo alcohólico, mis hermanos mayores alcohólicos. Eh, cuando, ellos, cuando yo supe de esta oportunidad, ellos hacían retiros, los o, hacen retiros en cada mes. Y ellos no hablaban de Dios porque yo no quería escuchar de Dios. Pero en ese retiro yo encontré mi vida, en, me encontré a mí, miré hasta dónde yo estaba y es cuando abro mi corazón y clamo a ese Dios. So, um, you got all that? Second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it helps, you know, that we've, we've gone We're going to put it in a transcribe and you know, every word better match. Just awesome. kidding. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. So she says, um, you know, she was at a point in her life where she was, you know, really contemplating suicide, just wanted to take pills, just really um, wanted to end it all, you know, through problems in uh, her marriage, um, problems in her personal life with her children, um, me growing up, um, just various, various different problems. Um, she, through that time, you know, she was at a really broken time in her, in her life. And uh, she's just so grateful to God that he chose that opportunity to really just kind of you know start a new process in her life so um through god's miraculous work um she she aligned herself with a uh what is it a um a, with an aa group um it was um not strictly aa but it was a I guess um 12-step program yeah but uh for like family members who are kind of um in uh you know who have had you know uh alcoholics in their family so um they got a specific oh, word for adult it. children for alcoholics uh, <laughs> yeah does that sound uh, right let's see it's a uh, what is it it's like al right? oh okay yeah al anon yeah 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 it's yeah. like mm -hmm. all together the program like uh there's a lot of wonderful 12-step programs they yeah are. definitely yeah. definitely so she was able to find this group um and they they specialize in taking you know broken family members you know family members who have had all this abuse in life sexual abuse alcoholic abuse drug abuse either themselves experimenting with it or just being victims of you know their family members close family members um, being part of that so they they did these uh spiritual experiences um so they would kind of be like a boot camp, kind of really throwing things out there, listening to all these broken experiences from people who have lived that, um, uh, who have lived the program, that those that that spiritual experience that they went up to. And uh, at the end of all this, you know, this boot camp where they're just listening to all of these experiences from different people, all this abuse that they've gone through and everything like that, just really breaking down their their walls and, and you know, putting it all out there for everybody to listen to. Um, it came time for her to go and do her experience. So she was able through that experience up and they take them away. They don't tell them where they're going. It's kind of like a kidnapping almost in a way, <laughs> you know, you would kind of uh, picture it, but uh, they really just take them out into the mountains. 
no phones, no service. Of course, they let family members know we're going to go up here. We, we were able to write little letters to them and things like that. But they take them away um, completely isolated and they have the spiritual encounters. So they start writing things down. You know, I've been through this. I've been through this. I blame this person, this and that. You know, this is where I was hurt. This is, you know, how I felt about my father, my mother. All Sounds kind of very familiar like a four step. There. <laughs> yeah, you know, and just really putting it out there and then through through that experience um she was able to you know find god and you know god had just came into her life and she just you know was able to acknowledge the living father and then that's pretty much where where it all really started there wow growing up in in catholicism you didn't feel god yo lo um ahí es donde por primera vez yo sentí Yo sentí ese Dios. Por eso hoy puedo decir, no, ha, no necesitas una religión, no necesitas simplemente buscar ese Dios. Yo uh, uh, fui víctima, sí, desde chiquita. Pero después vienes a desquitar tu coraje con los que más amas, que son tus hijos. Um, cuando yo me doy cuenta de que también he hecho mal, yo me arrastré ese día pidiéndole a él perdón, porque era primero a él pedirle perdón. Yo sentí, es más, yo vivía enferma. Tenía que tomar pastillas para dormir, para de, uh, depresión, para todo. Um, y... Yo sentí como él me perdonó, como me quitó todo eso que yo traía. Me sentí diferente, me sentí otra persona y de ahí yo lo empiezo a buscar. Empiezo a buscarlo en, el, en, um, en la iglesia católica. Compro por primera vez una Biblia, la leo, pero no entiendo, quiero que alguien me ayude. Lo busqué en la iglesia católica, no tenían las respuestas que yo quería, me confundía. Cuando me invitan a una, por primera vez sí yo acepto cuando me invitan a una iglesia cristiana. Sí, porque yo quiero conocer de la paz. De, de, de esa Biblia, de ese Dios que me perdonó, que me hizo diferente. Uh, cuando eso pasa, es cuando llego a la iglesia cristiana por 10 años. Empiezo a orar por mi, por primera vez empiezo a aprender a orar por mis, mi, mi hijo que estaba perdido en las drogas, en las pandillas. Uh, Empiezo. Antes ahí de, desde Católica no, no sentías a Dios, ¿verdad? No, Ninguna no experiencia de Dios, nada. No, fue a eh. través de ese encuentro que yo tuve con él. Uh, fue en esas montañas es, uh, y es cuando yo quiero conocerlo. Y las personas me dijeron, uh, ¿quieres con porque yo les pregunté, quiero conocer de ese Dios, ese Dios que yo sentí, ese Dios que que me perdonó, ese Dios que me ha transformado. Búscalo en la Biblia. Ellos me dijeron, si no tienes una religión, búscate una que te ayude. Y es lo que yo hice. Uh -huh. yeah, let me. So, yeah, before that, prior to that, um, you know, growing up Catholic, you know, the bitter Catholic, what I called myself, um, no, I did not experience God. I did not know God any on any form, anything like that, besides saying, you know, yeah, I'm a Catholic and, you know, that's my god there um but when i went up to that experience is when i really really felt god for the first time the 12 and, step experience. Yep, through that 12 step experience going up there into the mountains really feeling god and that's when you can say that that flame was lit and from that moment on um, i wanted to know who this god was that i experienced and if you're familiar with 12 steps and things like that they don't you know push you towards a god they don't influence you to believe in a certain god but they tell you go find who your higher power is and so such forth so um so she did just that um she started out with catholic with catholicism you know she got closer to her um 
to the Catholic Church that we have here locally. Um, she bought herself a Bible for the first time. She started reading that Bible for the very first time as well, too. And, you know, of course, you know, a lot of things didn't make sense. <laughs> so she had a lot of questions and um, um, but she wanted to feel that same experience that she felt up there in the mountain, that touch of God, just that that spiritual cleansing, that cleansing, that lifting, that baggage that she's been carrying for so long. And so she, she did that and she would go to the elders of the Catholic churches with all these questions, but they never had proper responses for her. Anything that would give her any meat to, you know, what she was actually looking for. So, yeah, before that, no, nothing. But ever since that beautiful experience that she had through that group, you know, that's that's when it, that's when it all started from there. And oh, then she ended up leaving, you know, the Catholic Church completely because she said they just have nothing for me. And she started experimenting with Christianity. And through that's when she learned how to pray. That's when she learned, um, you know, how to read and go through the scriptures. And that's when she, more doors started opening for her at that point. All right. And, and that was for about five years, the, the beginning of the doors started opening and reading the word and, and getting understanding. Yes, yeah, so yeah, through those 10 years after that point, yep, 10 years, yeah. um, that's when she um, switched over to Christianity. And yeah, everything started opening up for her. Yeah, uh, can relate. Um, <clears throat> I spent almost 10 years in a kind of an event. Uh, it was a Pentecostal church. I mean, my first one was at seven, uh, uh, going with my grandmother and people running the aisle, shouting, screaming, hollering on the floor, mm -hmm. weeping. It was just a whirlwind of emotions. And, and I dug it. I, I'm <laughs> like, I mean, it, it drew me. You know, the, I saw this passion for this, this god they call jesus so you know and i'm like hmm um and then i i went through a lot of uh trauma abuse sexual abuse uh, and then carrying that stuff into my adulthood and not showing up well in life uh even though i i, I came into the church just because we come into the church doesn't mean we get perfect right away yeah, yeah. and and sometimes and in my case you can have a head full of the bible and head full of god and your heart not be right. Yeah. Your uh, I, I entertained other unclean spirits, and it attacks a lot of Christians. Yeah. I, I don't remember the um, the stats right now, but it was in the hundreds of thousands of Christians uh, that are addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. uh, I was one of them, and it was just it's such a heavy beast to to overcome. But if it wasn't for Torah. And, and the instructions and, and how to view those through love to bring me out of that. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that Christianity does not teach and this channel uh, is supports and talks about is this, we are human beings, spiritual beings having a human experience. Mm -hmm. This whole thing talks about other gods yeah. all over it, all kinds of demons being cast out, you know, uh, especially in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. We see a lot of that going on um, the, from the fallen angel, Lucifer, in the, in the garden, to the watchers, uh, to the Nephilim, mm -hmm. to, it just goes on. And I really believe that the darkness in, of this world doesn't want us to believe that it's real. Because if we believed it was real, we might turn to the one who would deliver us and save us. So... You were having some tough times in in the uh, when you started to, uh, really getting into the Bible yourself. Did you find things, uh, old behaviors, old thought patterns that were still hard to break? Because uh, you mentioned that you felt suicidal uh, and you were going through a phase. Can you elaborate on that and how you, God called you out of that? Okay, so when you said that tenías como pensamientos de suicidarte y luego so obvio que tenías como cosas dentro de ti que tenías que trabajar y cosas así, so cuando hiciste ese cambio primero, um, ¿qué, qué eran esas cosas y, y, y cómo trabajaste con Dios fuera de esas cosas y a la misma vez ya siendo cristiana, cómo pudiste tú, um, si era, era algo que ya no tenías o era algo que todavía tenías que luchar, que seguir cambiando dentro de ti después siendo ya cristiana. Uno siempre tiene que estar todo todo tiempo en cambio, cambiando, buscando um, 
los, pues, pues estuve buscándolo en, en su palabra, siempre me estaba hablando. Uh, también cuando mi hijo um, viene también a, a, a él, que por medio de oraciones, él me escuchó y lo rescató. Él empieza a estudiar, a leer y, y es cuando dice, um, aquí también hay algo que, que, que necesitamos. Siempre buscamos algo que nos necesita, como, como que había algo que, que no estaba llenando. Había algo más que, y no entendía qué, pero eh, Dios siempre ha estado conmigo. En, uh, y me ha dado herramientas, me ha dado ayuda. Uh, él lo mandó con una razón también para ayudarme a mí, porque dijo, él dijo, él estudiando, estudiando también dijo, aquí es algo, necesitamos algo más. Y sí, ese... Para, no, no para interrumpir, pero más antes de eso, cuando tenías esa... Uh, antes de llegar como al grupo tenías como problemas que te llegó al punto de como ya querer tomar tu vida y you no know, muchos problemas en tu vida todas esas cosas sí. o so, cuando cambiaste a lo cristiano todavía tenías esos pensamientos um, que era lo que te llevó a este punto a querer como morir y luego si sí, ya después de ser cristiana todos esos problemas pararon o siguieron ahí pararon pararon, ¿Pararon? Pero um, siempre fue una lucha. Siempre estaban los problemas que yo tuve antes. Estaban ahí como, como invitándome a hacer lo mismo otra vez. Como, ah, como siempre, si no es por la palabra y porque a me dijeron, tú tienes que orar todo tiempo, todo tiempo, todo tiempo para poder pelear con eso y leer la palabra. Y sí lo estuve haciendo y hasta ahorita ha sido una lucha, pero ya no es igual que antes. No igual. Yeah. So, yeah, initially, yeah, everything just stopped. You know, there was like this grace period in the beginning. Um, but, you know, after it was like, you know, these temptations and you know these problems that I'd had before just kind of kept coming back and coming back and you know so through the Christian church you know they tell you just keep praying keep praying keep praying and you'll get through and you'll get through and you'll get through and you know that was true and it kind of still is to today you know you pray and you know things kind of you know resolve you know with God but but they still keep knocking don't they, they still keep knocking mm -hmm. you know and that's yeah. what she's explaining yeah you know like they're just still there still there still there no matter how much more she prayed yeah mm -hmm. yeah Paul begged uh, three times and had the thorn removed from the side nope <laughs> yeah, it, no. it you know it, as the psalmist says it is good that I'm afflicted that it will draw me closer to his word mm -hmm. you know um, it is written at least I want to say eight plus times that Jehovah tests us to see if we keep his commandments and love him or not mm -hmm. you know uh, just like a good parent would you know mm -hmm. Hear the instructions. Go on. Amen, amen, Y so ya con esos problemas, entonces, um, hay que decir, entonces, ¿cómo siguió después ahí con los problemas? ¿Qué, qué sí es o cómo, cómo salieron ahí todos tus problemas, tus tranquilidades, todo lo que estaba pasando, tu matrimonio, los, todo, y no todos los problemas, como uno por uno los empezas a tumbar o, o cómo se tumbaron? Con oración definitivamente con oración porque uh, cuando era muy reciente cuando yo empecé el cristianismo a leer y aprender a estar aprendiendo cuando mi ex esposo pide divorciarse se, se quiere ir y ya no me quiere y fue algo duro para mí en ese momento y Sí, nos separamos, nos divorciamos después. Fue algo que hasta en ese momento quise decir, uh, ¿por qué ahora? ¿Por qué ahora que estoy con Dios? No antes que, 
que no estaba con él. Pero yo, yo misma dije, no, es una mentira del enemigo. No voy a caer y no voy a caer. Fue duro, fue doloroso, pero no caí. Se, seguí adelante. Tal vez era yo muy nueva, no conocía mucho como para haber peleado por ese matrimonio o, o, o no sé, tal vez Dios me lo quitó porque era un estorbo, porque sí, siempre después que yo me convierto, uh, era una, eran peleas siempre con él, porque iba a la iglesia, porque iba acá y, y era como un tropiezo pero, para mí, pero no caí. Hasta ahorita no me he dejado caer. Y eso gracias a, al Padre, porque sin Él yo no hubiera, no sé, no sé dónde estuviera ahorita. Muerta, loca, en un manicomio, en, tal vez en la cárcel, porque yo era, todos esos problemas que yo tenía, era bien agresiva, bien agresiva. Me hacían algo y yo explotaba y nomás quería pelear. En mi trabajo siempre quería pelear con todos. Fue algo bien, 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 bien. Este, ese cambio que yo hice de repente fue algo sorpresivo. Porque cuando yo regreso de esa montaña y ah, empiezo a pedir perdón a todos los que conozco ofendí con los que quise pelear con... y, y me decían ¿qué te pasó a ti? estás bien rara me decía ¿qué te pasó? y era yo de pastillas y Ay, yo ya no necesito eso y, y decían que me veían el rostro diferente tenía una sonrisa tenía algo diferente que yo no tenía antes entonces um, fue algo bien lindo lo que me pasó y hasta hoy sigo, vienen pruebas, sí, viene el enemigo y pone cosas, pero yo sé cómo contraatacarlo, más con esa hermosa Torah que he conocido ahora, ha sido algo más lindo para mí, lo más lindo en mi vida ha sido haber conocido esa Torah, ¿qué es esa Torah? Los primeros cinco libros de Moisés que en el cristianismo me dijeron, ya está abolido el Antiguo Testamento. Y... Yeah, let me turn up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, first off, you know, one of the, you know, after having that beautiful experience, becoming Christian, um, aligning myself with my Christian church, in my evangelical Christian church, um, one of the biggest trials that continued from the, that before that change happened um, was, was with my marriage at the time. So one of the big things also that kind of came back was that same problem as well too. So being in church, um, you know, praying and everything like that, seeming like I was doing everything right was also the moment that my husband um, came to me and told me, I don't want to be with you no more and we need to get a divorce. And uh, that's what ended up happening, you know? Um, and, you know, and I would tell myself, you know, why is this happening now, you know, why? Now that I'm lining myself up, you know, why could this be happening now? But um, I was able to kind of, you know, though hard as it was, I was able to pull myself together and say, no, this is, you know, just something from the enemy. And, you know, perhaps God is doing this for a reason, because looking back at who I was before that, um, it was it was very hard. You know, we were always arguing. We were always, you know, even getting to the point of actually fighting each other. Um, you know, it was a very toxic relationship. And, you know, it was very, very difficult for me and my children. Um, but God, you know. You don't have to whoop his butt in front of the kids. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, it came down. And um, so, yeah, that was one of the things. And um, also another, you know, and then that kind of led to another thing, too. So, I mean, um, you know, it just helped her to, you know, instead of looking at it as something that just, you know, shouldn't have been happening because she was doing everything right. She just kind of turned it around and took it for the better. She said, you know, obviously this is going to be for a reason, God, and I'm not going to keep my eyes off of you and what we're doing. Nice. So, you know, as hard as it was, you know, she, she got through that, you know, and that was all because she was praying and looking for that God, you know, not looking through him through religion and, and you know, conforming herself to that religion, whatever sect, whatever it may be, but just because she was seeking him. 
And um, another thing she noted was that, um, you know, after that experience and after becoming Christian, it was almost that change was almost instant, you know, um, because she knew that she had a lot um, also that she was doing that kind of influenced those arguments, you know, that separation that eventually ended up happening through divorce and everything like that. She had a very short fuse on her. She was a very angry person. She was ready to fight, you know, whether verbally or physically. She was just ready to, you know, just drop what she was doing. She seems like get a down. calm little princess. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and, yeah, and, you know, and her coworkers backed that up, too, even to this day. You know, they're like, you know, you changed, you know, before, you know, you used to just want to fight everybody, you know, and things like that. But now, you know, you're like, you're a different person, you know, and it did it, it almost happen instantly and stuff like that. So, you know, she really, she really, really, really did a big change there, you know, and even, even to this day, you know, she still tries hard, she you knows she's not perfect, she knows she's not perfect, but she, she continues, she, you know, <laughs> she continues trying, you know, and then, you know, kind of maybe getting a little ahead of this interview, but, you know, with Torah and everything like that, I mean, she's just so grateful that she has the Torah, that she has these beautiful books, you know, that, you know, her Christian church used to say, you know, all the five books, you know, they're all abolish the torah no more you know the law wouldn't live under the law no more but you know she finds joy in those first five books written by moses you know and she just finds so much joy through them and she's just so grateful that she has them in her life let's 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 tackle that right now so you're uh was it new vintage or uh victory outreach victory outreach so you're there you, you've you've gotten uh i would say a foundation from them at least right yep. um where were you all of a sudden like for me, uh, I, I have fibromyalgia and sometimes in winter, it's hard for me to get out. Uh, I'll watch YouTube teachings and um, I was watching his preaching and then on the side, the related videos I might wanna watch that interest me was this guy named Michael Rood, Feast of the Lord. The heck is this? And that's changed my life ever since. I had no idea about the feast, no idea about Shabbat. I started seeing it everywhere at that point when I'm reading. And I took it to uh, a, a couple of people that I looked up to, um, and I got the same thing. It's done away with. It was nailed at the cross. These types of things, and it just it did not sit well with me. As I'm learning, and I'm sure you can identify, what's being said over here and what's written are not the same. So where were you when Torah came to you or Sabbath? Awesome, awesome. And kind of building up to that too. So she kind of answered it a little bit before too, but um. Um, through that time, through her prayers, through her trials and everything that kept going on, eventually I came, you know, over to the good side, the light side, you could say, <laughs> you know, so she saw that as just a huge blessing as well, too, because now instead of only her studying and looking for further things, you know, I began to start doing those kind of things as well, too, and seeking more and wanting to know who that God of the Bible was as well, too. So that kind of really, really helped reinforce and, uh, you know, help us together, you know, be able to find new ways of thinking and things like that. Um, and then I'll go on into your question. So, ahora, um, ya sabiendo todo lo que ha pasado y todo, you know, puedes decir que la iglesia te, te hizo una fundación, you know, al, que algo bueno para construir ya. So, ¿qué era lo que te llamó atención a la ¿Qué era lo que cambió, que te hizo querer ya buscar la Torah? ¿Qué era, qué era lo que te inició ese ese nuevo pensamiento que era algo que mira, miraste, algo que sentiste, que era lo que te cambió tu mente a, a querer ya seguir y, y ver otras cosas. ¿Qué era lo que cambió en tu vida? Ay, yo, yo seguía sintiendo que faltaba algo más, que, que era algo más, porque cuando me decían, está abolido el Viejo Testamento, pero nos exigían un diezmo que estaba en el Antiguo Testamento. Es un ejemplo, ¿verdad? Eh, bueno, si está abolido, ¿por qué se agarra de ahí lo del diezmo? Y, pero yo, cuando mi hijo me, me dice que oh, necesitamos, mira aquí, vi esto, me gustó, uh, de lo de estudiar los los libros de Moisés, o sea, el, el Torah, la Torah, ¿verdad? Y, y encontró un lugar que es, es uh, hello, uh, necesitamos ir. Y él dijo, busca en español. <risa> y, ah, oh, pues no, no hay en español en Santa Rosa, solo en San José, San José. Espa hay uno en español. Oh, pero 
lo mismo sigue siendo una bendición para mí porque me traduce y, uh, esto me gustó para empezar dice no guarda el, cuart el cuarto mandamiento que es el Shabbat yes, ok sientes como que lo haces para Dios pero él lo hace en su amor para nosotros ¿por qué? porque antes decía ok hoy descanso me toca descanso pero mentira nunca descansaba tenía que ok lavar y hacer esto y el otro un verdadero descanso es preparar todo en una semana y, y el sábado descansarlo ah, qué, qué hermoso ha sido eso qué hermosa experiencia ah, guardar las fiestas que son bíblicas no 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 es de ninguna religión no es que las estén um, est esta religión lo, lo dice porque lo vamos a hacer porque lo dice no está ahí escrito esas fiestas verdaderas eh, y es cuando entiendo ok yo antes celebraba navidad porque aunque no decía en ninguna parte de la Biblia que el 24 nació nuestro Salvador, pero la iglesia lo decía, ok, vamos a celebrarlo. ¿Y qué día es cuando más gente se suicida porque no tienen dinero? Se estresan porque tanto regalo que compran y... Porque yo estuve así. Entonces es un cambio que yo, ay, hoy sí descanso, no celebro Navidad. No gasto dinero, vivo tranquila con mi familia. Um, un cambio bien diferente. Y todo porque está escrito. Y nomás es seguirlo. Las fiestas de la, que están ahí, qué lindas han sido. Hay que te relajaste un poquito porque déjame explicar esto y después regresamos. So, um, Uh, so let's see, I'll explain her response and then we'll kind of go back because I'm going to ask her the same question again a little bit more. Um, so she said, you know, one of the things that really stood out to her while we were in the church and stuff like that um, was that, you know, they would always tell us, you know, the Old Testament, you know, forgotten now, it's lost. I mean, you know, it's just done with, you know, gone away. Now, now we're on to new things, you know, the New Testament, you know, and that, you know, the old laws and everything like that just don't pertain to us anymore, things like that. Um, but, you know, one thing that always stand out to me is that they were really big on tithing and where they would get their resources for the tithing would always go back to the Old Testament. So while they're telling us that it's no longer, you know, it's relevant and things like that, that was always something that stood out to me. It's like, no, they're going back, you know, to the Old Testament and telling us that we need a tithe because it's in the Old Testament and things like that. So just little, you know, inconsistencies like that, you know, were really standing out to me, um, you know, and then further along, you know, my son uh, started a... Uh, investigating, researching places that we could go, um, you know, that would kind of show us in align with what we were kind of studying at the time. And through that group, uh, through that research, you know, we found Hallel, um, and it was a group here in Santa Rosa at the time. Um, we're still in Santa Rosa, but you know, you know, at a different As location. of this recording, we're still part of it. You know, still in Santa Rosa. <laughs> um, you know and, and you know, and I told my son, I was like, well, how about a Spanish, you know, um, version or anything like that where, you know, we can learn Spanish. And you're the son she's referring to? Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> yes. And then, um, you know, we looked up Spanish um, locations as well, too. But I think, like, the closest one we had found was San Jose. So, you know, we're like, oh, no, we can't really go out there. It's kind of far. <laughs> But we ended up trying out Hallel over here, you know, and when we started learning more about the Sabbath and what a true rest day was. Um, because before that, too, you know, we didn't really have any real rest days, you know. Um, you know, it was always going to church. We'd probably be at church maybe four days out of the week, sometimes five days out of the week. Um, always working, always working at this, doing this, you know, so there was no real rest. Um, another thing that she brought out, too, was like the holidays and stuff, too. So like Christmas, you know, they would always celebrate christmas the 25th day you know is when jesus was born blah, 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 blah. but you know in reality the bible never said that christmas uh that jesus was born you know yeshua was born on christmas day or anything like that so that really just stood out to her too and then when she started researching more about that specific holiday and others too you know that's also when like suicide rates spike you know depression spikes that's when people just you know all this depression and all these different forces you know come out you know because people are spending money that they don't have and things like that so she herself just started researching these things and she just was like no you know once she decided to keep Torah and 
and you know put aside these holidays she found peace you know she found shalom she found you know what a real rest was you know in the shabbat and everything like that and then um so también lo que quería preguntar también era de que que era como como o más bien so si quieres puedes hablar de los festivos también de los días pero que era lo que te llamó a cambiar como estaba siguiendo antes o so, que era lo que te abrió tu mente como a cosas mesiánicas cosas um, de la torá cosas de you know, así de los libros de moisés que era lo que te cambió you know, de enseñanzas en el youtube lo que sea que, que era lo que te cambió uh, en, bueno sí también miré a uh, unos que incluso está en inglés del este ¿cómo se llama él? James Daly. James Daly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know está en inglés. Truth or Tradition. Mm -hmm. Pero Woo. usaba el traductor y y, y él, me, me, me gustó. Y cuando empiezo acá uh, a estudiar pues la Torah y, y ver cómo, cómo se estudia y y es algo, algo que me gustó mucho porque cuando tú estudias el, los libros de Moisés puedes entender el Nuevo Testamento. Y antes ya me confundía yo mucho porque decía, bueno, dicen que, que no, que ya no, no el antiguo, pero aquí dice, han solo había un versículo que se me quedó que porque decían, ya la ley está abolida. Pero en Mateo dice que él no vino a abolir la ley, sino vino a hacer que se cumpla. Entonces, uh, yo las encuentro aquí y me ha gustado muchísimo, muchísimo, muchísimo estar estudiando. Uh, también me gusta David Diamond también, ¿no? Sí, no, sí también David Diamond. Um, un, en español, él también me, me ayudó mucho a poder entender, incluso él hablaba muchas palabras en hebreo porque él es judío, pero es cristiano. O sea, es, tiene descendencia judía, pero es, eh, predica cristiano. Pero sí también él, él me ayudó. Yeah, so, and then to give a little context to our response, so by this time we had already left the Christian church um, you know, what really drove us out really was the holidays that they were celebrating, you know, things that aren't in the Torah, let's say, you know, Easter, um, Christmas, um, even trunk or treat, you know, closely to uh, Halloween and, and such and such. Um, also the tithing and then, you know, um, there was also just charging to hear the word, you know, in a way, you know, so all those things slowly but surely, um, you know, just drove us out of the church, you could say, no matter what, how, how hard we tried to stay in the church. Did you feel lied to? ¿Sentiste esa mentira que te mintieron a ti, la iglesia? En realidad, ¿Were you sí. mad at them? No, no mal, no mal, porque todo me, hasta los alcohólicos me ayudaron. Ha sido, fue como un proceso y yo lo que hoy veo es que Dios usa um, cualquier medio. Como yo, como estaba de que no quería saber de nada, Él supo que si me lleva ahí, me iba a, iba, iba yo a abrir mi corazón porque lo tenía cerrado. Entonces, cada etapa que yo viví me gustó porque fue como un proceso para llegar hasta donde estoy hoy. No desguardo, al contrario, quisiera que sintieran lo mismo que siento hoy. Y le pido a, a Dios que, que lo haga porque es algo bonito que, que yo he encontrado y, y todo me ha ayudado, me ha ayudado. Sí, eh, tuve malas experiencias en cada proceso, pero me, todo me ayudó para llegar a donde estoy hoy con mi toda and so with like the christian church um no didn't i don't feel mad at them or anything like that because just like with the uh the the you know the aa groups you know that we were with before 
um you know they had their things as well too but you know i don't feel bad or, or mad at them in any way um only because you know the way i look at it now is that it was all part of the process you know and i still did receive a lot of good from those groups um but what i do pity is and, and and hope and pray for is that one day they're also you know their eyes are also opened up and that they're revealed the same things that have been revealed to me um because you know i do i do have a warm spot for them in my heart you know because they did help me out a lot um but yeah things just got to the point where we just could not be there anymore um but to where we are now with torah and everything like that um it's just it's just such a beautiful thing you know and you know i wish that upon everybody and um so a little bit too to her response earlier too so um a uh, couple of the great teachers that she mentioned that you know when we had left the church and we were pretty much just youtube ministries you know <laughs> all over um one of the ones that she a couple of the ones she really uh clung on to were um jim staley you know um early on too and he did a lot for me in my life as well too um you mentioned truth and tradition as well right. too and just yeah. how a lot of powerful. great teachings yeah a lot of great teachings man um so those really spoke to her. He had a uh, translator as well, too. So she was able to watch his videos in the Spanish as nice. well, too, which That's was right, just yeah. a big, big help. And I think um, 119 Ministry does, too, don't they? 119 as well, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I know she yeah. watched those ones as well, too. Yeah. Those were big in our, yeah, early on in our transition, too. And then another one that she really uh, clung on to, too, was uh, De uh, David Diamond. So he was, um, he's a Jewish uh, man, but Spanish speaking. Um, he uh, lives out there in that area as well, too. But uh, he's just like, prophesizing and uh you know really breaking down the torah things like that um being a jewish um yeshua believer you know it just really opened up you know her mind and my mind too you know just tremendously and uh you know he would throw out hebrew words and he would you know help us understand the hebrew words and stuff like that too so i believe that that's really what kind of drove us even more into you know the hebrew you know minded kind of thinking and things like that and then eventually led us down to torah as well you know, you're 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 much younger than I am. <laughs> so I mean, uh, you're probably more in touch with the your the younger generation uh, with the cancel culture movement. Are you familiar with that? Definitely, yes. You yeah, definitely okay. So, what light of understanding I have about it is there are these group of people that are so ticked off about being lied to, about uh, just totally intolerant towards uh, the anger, hate, violence, you know, towards anybody, you know, and that's why we have the LGBTQ movement and, and other movements that I, I see the core is they don't want to be bullied, beat up and hated on. That I agree. You know, we may differ on other issues about that, but it's the, the heart of God. It doesn't want those attributes in any of us treating any way, anybody that way. Yeah. But the this whole thing, especially I'm, I'm seeing like on TikTok, people that are really mad at the Christian church because they're not walking out what the, the scriptures say. They're not, they're ignoring history, language, culture, distorting the context, hence 400,000 different denominations. You know, a lot of people that are getting called out of the Western Christian church are mad. They feel lied to. And, um, you mentioned a, a, a phrase very important, and, and I like to call three witnesses to what you said about, you know, the eyes being opened. So um, there is someone I admire um, that, uh, uh, <laughs> I keep my opinion to myself on it, but he, uh, there are people that have asked this Jewish teacher, how can you not see that Jesus is the Messiah, that Yeshua is him? Um, and I've heard him say these three witnesses. He said, one, uh, when Peter uh, and, and the rest of them uh, had just came out of synagogue uh, on Shabbat, where Yeshua just said, if you don't eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man, you have no part in me. And everybody's leaving, right? You, you know the story? Mm -hmm. And he turns to the disciples, will you leave too? Do you remember what Peter said? To whom will we, where will we go to whom? You have the words of life. We know that you are the son of God. And Yeshua's response is, is flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but only my father in mm -hmm. heaven. Mm -hmm. So the only Abba can open up the eyes. Mm -hmm. We have the disciples on the road to, uh, to Emmaus, so heading back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
This guy's sitting there talking to him. They had no idea it was Yeshua the whole time. I mean, they sat down and had and sup with him. And, and as he opened up their eyes to all their scripture, they realized all of a sudden, it's him, he's alive, he's risen, and poof, he's gone, <laughs> right? And then the famous one with Paul, blinded for three days and the scales falling off. And him taking off into the wilderness, some of the uh, scholars say anywhere anyway, between three to 14 years. I mean, can you imagine being shook, your eyes being opened up to, to who Yeshua is in the Torah and the truth about the Torah? I mean, this man knew thou shalt not kill, right? Not murder. Paul murdered a lot. Yeah. And that just had to crush him. I, I mean, just go out in the wilderness and like, uh, you want me to go and, and speak to the Gentiles after what I just did? That yeah. guilt, condemnation, and shame, I'm sure he felt it too. Oh, yeah. you know, and, and that's the enemy's job. Guilt, condemnation, shame. It's the same program. Repeat, repeat, you know, for all of us. Amen. And, um, Amen. Yeah, so I pray the same thing that, you know, um, because I have a lot of people that uh, have uh, at least a story in my head is they've written me off. I'm lost. I'm under the law. And uh, I, I don't have the spirit in God. And these are some of the assumptions and, uh, and some of the actual words that were told to me. Mm -hmm. um, this is why this, this platform, I want to create an opportunity through experience, not through teaching. I'm going to put links to, to Jim Staley, like you mentioned, and to 119 Ministry, because I think providing people, you know, some, a, a rabbit hole to go down and, and check things out for themselves, you know, be brains, mm -hmm. test his spirit to see what you're of, see if what, if what we are saying is true. Um, and, and it's, it's okay. You know, you don't have a rebellious spirit, um, going outside of a pastor, preacher, teacher, reading the word of God for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I went on a tangent. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're spot on, spot on. One of the things she mentioned too, you know, was just like, uh, you know, going through all this Torah study, learning, you know, the Torah, going through those wonderful teachers that she found online and everything like that really helped her to really refocus on the Old Testament, you know, Old Testament, the Torah, the, you know, the prophets and all that. And then really just helped her understand even more the New Testament. And she says, you know, she feels that you can't really understand the New Testament if you don't understand the first half of the book, you know, and that's just what right. changed uh, tremendously for who her. Who picks up a novel and just reads the back of the book and thinks they got it all understood? Right. Right. Only Christianity does that. Right. God bless us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because there are many en el cristianismo había muchos um, versos que o hay muchos versos que o sea todo dice como uh, Yeshua celebraba las fiestas bíblicas Yeshua y por qué porque ya no um, pero es, es bien bonito ha sido bien bien lindo Conocer la Torah es lo más, más bonito que me ha pasado y no me arrepiento y me siento llena. Um, estoy soltera por cuántos años ya, como 15 años yo creo y, y no me siento sola. A veces me dicen, oh, pues tienes pretendientes, pues, es que si, si me siento bien, o sea, no, me siento llena, me siento, no sé, uh, uh, problemas vienen, pero ya no los siento como antes, uh, es, es, me siento llena con, con mi Torah y, y con Abba y aunque no soy perfecta, tengo muchos errores y le fallo todos los días, no como antes, pero... Uh, quisiera ser perfecta como mi Yeshua, uh, no, pero aún así yo soy, soy feliz, soy feliz. Uh, por eso a veces cuando oro, yo lloro porque me recuerda la vida que tuve antes y qué hubiera sido de mí si no, si no llego a donde estoy ahorita, si cuando venían esos problemas, esas, esas, esas pruebas cuando yo empiezo a leer y vienen las pruebas y me quieren tirar, si yo me hubiera ido, 
no estuviera donde estoy ahorita. Yeah, so, you know, beginning, you know, a lot of things that stood out to me was, you know, that Yeshua, Jesus, you know, he, he kept his face, you know, he kept the Sabbath and things like that. And, you know, early on in Christianity, you know, I never really understood those things, you know, but coming to know the Torah, you know, it, all those things just really opened up to me. You know, Jesus was Jewish, you know, he kept his face, you know, and, and, you know, keeping those feasts too are things, you know, that God loves. And, you know, if God loves them, you know, why wouldn't I want to do them as well too, you know? And, um, you know, finding the Torah, keeping Torah, things Wait, like Are you quoting like a New Testament doing a walk as he walked? <laughs> right. Right. Concept. You know, you know, then that, that's what it is. Like, you know, you walk as he walked, you know, and and you know through doing that you know walking through his footsteps understanding you know or learning to understand what he knew you know and what he was trying to show us you know and reading through the scriptures the whole book you know um, you know i wouldn't change a thing about it um you know it showed me so much you know and it's something that i truly adore in my life you know and um knowing the torah you know i've been you know probably divorced now for 15 years maybe over 15 years you know and you know, I have a lot of followers, you know, you could say, you know, that want to, you know, start, you know, you know, relationships and things like that from work, friends, things like that. It's just like, but, you know, none of those things interest me, um, you know, with the tour and everything like that. I feel full. I feel whole, you know, and I wouldn't change anything about that. You know, it's just such a beautiful thing. And plus to be unevenly yoked with an unbeliever that doesn't have the same passion for Torah. It's it. Yeah, it's really being. It's yeah. not that it's it's hard. I, I've tried um, uh, Captain Save a Woman. There's <laughs> that's, that's another word for that, but um, <laughs> PG version. Um, yeah, I throw on my cape and uh, I will teach her Torah. <laughs> that doesn't work. Oh, good God help me. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, stay single. It's fine. <laughs> That's men. We suck anyways. <laughs> All right, I speak for myself. <laughs> you know, and then the other thing she noticed, like, you know, she knows she's still not perfect. You know, she, you know, there's a lot still to work on and things like that. But, you know, with the tour and everything like that, you know, she's got direction. She's got clear direction, clear instructions, clear directives, you know, what to do. And she, yeah, just Torah making her whole and she wouldn't change anything about it. Wonderful, wonderful. I, is there been any one point moment in time where the love of God which really grabbed you from studying Torah that if you hadn't, you would never saw it and that your eyes never been open to it? Is that, is that clear? Yeah, so one more time. One more time. So I, I don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Rewind the tape. No. <laughs> No, and sometimes I, I, I know there's been a couple of moments in time that were like anchors, like big aha revelation moments that was like, I would land up hitting the ground, sobbing and thanking Abba for that revelation, that wisdom, that knowledge, uh, it, it would be part of his attributes is uh, his love and kindness, his faithfulness. Along those lines, can you look back and go, oh, when I learned this about Sabbath, this hit me in scripture or this experience? Yeah, so, regresando a ver si habían unos tiempos claves en tu historia con ya conociendo la Torre y todo eso. So, algo clave que tú te recuerdas que te cambió, que fue algo muy grande, muy clave en tu vida, que aprendiste, o sea, de algo, unas escrituras, algo que te reveló Dios, de que estabas estudiando y aprendiste. Algo del Shabbat, algo que, que te ha cambiado, que ahorita puedes pensar para atrás a ese momento que, que dices, wow, you know. Creo que es otra vez. No le. Ok, so, so como un momento clave, so, algo que, que, que estabas estudiando, que aprendiste, so hay que decir, como por ejemplo, él, como cuando aprendió de la sabiduría, de la inteligencia de Dios, cosas así, y de guardar su Shabbat, que abrieron sus ojos, fueron revelados, y que le cambió su uh, vida, y you know, que ahora supo dónde ir a buscar you know, su, su, su respaldo de Dios en esos momentos, y you know, algo que le cambió, algo que te cambió a ti, algo que, que Dios mismo te enseñó 
y que ahora puedes pensar para atrás y dices, si no me hubiera enseñado eso Dios, y you no know, no sé dónde hubiera estado ahorita. Algo muy grande y importante que te enseñó Dios. Los mandamientos. Los mandamientos. Los mandamientos, esa ley preciosa, que son las que te apartan de, del pecado, que son las que te apartan de, de tu vida pasada. Y, y cuando sé que me que dice uh, tú, cuando tú te salvas tus generaciones serán salvas hoy en día siento mucha responsabilidad por mis hijos mis nietos y, y eso también me hace feliz ver estás tú uh, May vino uh, mis nietos están creciendo. Mi hijo Daniel se desvió. Pero yo sé que él, él un día lo va a traer, tal vez para dar testimonio de quién es, porque él ya lo conoce. Pero sí, los mandamientos. Hubo un versículo que dice, no versículo, no sé dónde lo escuché. Dice, um, si tú amas a Él, obedece sus mandamientos. Es como puedes, no nada más estar leyendo la palabra, yendo a, a congregarte. No, tienes que obedecerlo. No ser perfecto, porque no, nadie es perfecto, pero tratando de... Amén. La, Amén. la ley, la, los mandamientos. Amén. Decir. So she says for her it was when she grew to understand and had just revelation on the commandments and truly understanding the commandments and, you know, the beautifulness behind it, you know, how it separates you from sin. Um, you know, just, you know, it teaches you how to separate yourself from sin and align yourself with God. Um, without that, you know, um, sorry, trying to recollect what. It's okay. <laughs> you know, but yeah, um, yeah learning the commandments, understanding them truly. You know, she quoted the scripture where, you know, Yeshua himself said as well too, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Um, you know, and how they really, and then how God just revealed and through through that love, through that obedience to him, you know, your generations will be saved too, your future generations. And, you know, and she said, um, she's been able to see that, you know, just manifest through her life. So through my life, um, through my children's life, her grandchildren's lives, you know, just all growing up now, um, you know, learning, you know, to pray to God, learning to keep Torah as well too, just keeping that, you know, just that breaking of all that bondage from before, you know, keeping the commandments, you know, and learning what God loves and how to keep them and everything like that, just really just turned all the bad that had happened before in her life, all that she knew, those heavy chains, those burdens that she had previously, just took them all away and, you know, has, And she believes truly that she truly, truly believes that that's what has separated her and fixed her, her generations to come. And that, you know, it's what's really going to heal them all. And, you know, she does have one other son, my brother, who is, um, you know, in the world now, you could say. And but she still believes that, you know, he will come with a powerful testimony back to the Lord. And, you know, and all through just keeping the commandments because she holds tight to that, that, you know, through keeping the commandments, her generations will be saved. And keeping the commandments is like a fountain of life. Those who have the fear of the Lord, you know, maybe avoid the snares of death. Amen. You know, it, it is, yeah, it is such a wonderful journey. I, I agree that keeping the Torah and the commandments helps you understand how to approach the Father. You know, the difference between clean and unclean, are, are you are you, are you, you able to approach the king or not? And the, the instructions to help us to get right, to get clean. So we have access, uh, you know, in holiness, in separation, and, you know, with our deeds and our actions and our thoughts. And that's what this walk is about. It's always been a heart issue. Do you love me? Do you, are you, do you believe I'm with you or not? Do you trust me? You believe in faithfulness. I'm the faithful one. I am different and set apart from any other gods. And, you know, my sister, who's a pagan, um, <clears throat> my dad, when we were young, my dad would, you know, 
you know, she started talking about other gods, you know, and my dad said, there's only one God. And his dad, or his dad, it says, don't have any other gods before him. That means there are other gods as he went, bam, and knocked her to the ground. Oh my goodness. But there are other gods. There are other Elohims. And this helps us see the difference, how they show up, these other Elohims. Mm -hmm. We thank God that it's put in the Torah the attributes of Lucifer, that pride that lifted up, I will be like the Most High. I will cause discord and confusion in the garden. Did God really say, sure, you will not really die, die? Amen. Yeah. I mean, it's just the author of confusion. It helps us. When I look at Torah, I get to see, oh, wait a minute. If I recognize and put my whole heart in loving him with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my strength and resources, everything, that's abiding in the vine, as, as Yeshua talks about in the book of John. And that is life. I won't have to be cut, cut off and dried up and withered and thrown into the fire. You know, and nobody wants that. You know. <laughs> so in, in, in closing, is there a message that you would like to say to the Latino community about coming out of Christian church to Torah and... Any message you want to say about that in love? Un mensaje a la comunidad latino, un mensaje de amor, un mensaje que quieres que todos sepan. Ah, definitivamente. Ve, busquen esta la Torah. Que, um, que es la Torah? Son los libros de Moisés. Porque definitivamente si lo piensas, si lo estudias o esos libros fueron los que fueron inspirados por el mismo creador. Los demás han sido como los profetas también son una clave para que puedas entender el Nuevo Testamento. Uh, se disfruta tan bonito porque es nomás la repetición del antiguo. Todo está ahí. Cuando estudias esto, ves como que se te quita un velo. Porque yo así lo sentía que tenía un velo que no, no podía ver. Quería ver, quería ver, pero no veía. Y cuando veo, quito ese velo y veo. Y hasta ahorita sigo estudiando mi Torah, la escucho. Y yo soy de las personas que dices, te, me pregunto, ¿por qué? Un ejemplo, dice, no comas puerco, porque está escrito, no lo estoy inventando. Y dice, y yo, no, ok, ¿por qué puerco? Porque yo sí comía puerco. No, no, no digo que no. Me pongo a estudiar, ¿qué dice la ciencia del puerco? Tiene un montón de enfermedades que provienen del puerco, del camarón. Entonces, ¿qué sabiduría hay? una sabiduría y todo es por amor a nosotros dejas de comer eso y estás más saludable hoy, hoy tengo esa a mi edad casi el año que viene cumplo 60 años y voy a un doctor y se sorprenden de que esté tan saludable no, no tengo otras enfermedades ¿por qué? porque empiezas, empiezo a obedecer lo que hace daño para mí lo que me debe de alimentar es todo está ahí en la Torah. Aprende tu Torah y ese es tu alimento, esa es tu medicina, es, es lo más hermoso que puedes encontrar. Trata, trata, porque es algo bien lindo. Quisiera decirte toda mi historia, todo mi, mi pasado que viví. Fue, fue, fue duro, fue... Me puedo, te puedo decir que puede pasar de lo peor, de ver a tu padre alcohólico golpeando a tu mamá, que te pasan cosas de niño y que, y que te quedas con ese coraje y no sabes a dónde ir y luego hasta tienes rencor por tu, con ese Dios. Dices, si tal vez estés en esa situación, ¿verdad? Que dices, si Él existiera, ¿por qué no me salvó? No sabemos que hay maldiciones de nuestros antepasados. Lo está escrito. Si tú, si tú traes pecados, van a seguir en tus generaciones. Pero cuando tú vienes a Él y la rompes, tus bendiciones, tus generaciones son benditas. 
hoy soy feliz porque veo a mis nietos un, de, de un año y ya, ya empieza a orar sus primeras palabras son orar ah, quisiera decirte mil cosas pero no sé cuánto tiempo, tiempo tengo pero ven, ven a la Torah no me creas a mí crea ese libro gracias But yeah, to sum it up, you know, she says it really encourage everybody to come to know the Torah, to come to know the prophets, to come to know what's written in those books. Um, you know, it's changed her life and she wants that for, for everybody else as well, too. There's so much wisdom in those, those books, in those words. Uh, a small example she gave um, was, you know, uh, one of the commandments to not eat pork, not eat pig, you know, not eat swine. She says uh, there's so much wisdom in every single line. So, for example, that's that little example there. When she got to study and you know why does it say you know not to eat it she, of course she obeyed it right off the bat but she she went you know another step forward to see what wonder what's so bad about pig you know um and she went to study it and you know she found out that it just leads to so many diseases there's so many you know things associated with pig yeah, and bottom feeders pork. bottom feeders you know yeah, it's just garbage you know, cans <laughs> yeah garbage can everything they consume that they're just not meant to be consumed by humans you know and if you do you know there's just so many diseases that come through it you know so so many bad things that you know come as a result from Ooh, if you don't cook it all the way through the worms in it oh you they're know. pulling them out of people's brains youtube it worms out of brain from eating pork it's i will post thing. it i'll tell you what <laughs> it's a real thing definitely definitely you know and so she says you know she through that wisdom and then so much more you know that she could share too um you know she she's known how to take better care of herself spiritually physically mentally and everything you know um she's about to turn 60 she mentioned and no. you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know and as she goes to 25 <laughs> you know and as she goes to their doctor visits and everything like that too they're just so surprised that nothing's wrong with her they can't find anything wrong with her she's just aging beautifully you know and um just you know all through obedience you know just learning what you know abba tells us to, to put into our bodies how we should treat others things like that mentally physically everything there's just so much wisdom in, in those books you know and um you know she wishes she could share her testimony so much more and all the things like that you know but just even through those books the torah and the prophets you know um Uh, you know, she's lived through so much in her life, you know, there's a lot of baggage that you can hold on to in your own life, you know, through the past experiences, for example, she gave the example of her parents fighting, you know, in front of her and things like that. So you, you carry these chains, you carry this sin that your parents had with you, um, you know, you, and then you carry this anger within you, you know, that just grows on you and it just continues to grow. And, you know, and then following through the tour and everything like that has shown her how to just break those chains and how to just really rely on it because if you don't change your ways you know that sin is going to carry on to your future generations and Abba is true I'm holding to his word and that's what he says that it will happen you know and and she's just so gracious you know she's just so thankful to God that through keeping Torah and everything like that she's able to see her grandchildren you know from one years old you know just start growing and learning how to praise you know how to pray and And you know, are clinging on to God as well too. You know, um, and dancing, and dancing, yes. and everything like that. You know, Praising so she God. holds tight to His promises, definitely. You know, and she wishes the same for everybody. You know, here's the beautiful thing: it 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 can be the very last moment, just like the guy on the cross next to Yeshua. Today, you will see me in paradise. Mm -hmm. Right? It, it when someone says, "I want to turn away from the dark attributes." Of, of the filth of guilt, condemnation, shame, all the dark, oppressive energies that come to kill, steal, and destroy. When we abide in the fear of the Lord, that's refuge, mm -hmm. that's peace, that's stability, that's comfort, that's rest. I'm hearing you say all these things from going into Torah that you are experiencing from the Creator Himself. Is that right? Que sí, que estás experienciando todo esto de que, you know, una vida llena en, en el Señor por, por medio de, de guardar su Torah y todo eso, que está agarrando, que tú estás agarrando todos estos conceptos claves que estás recibiendo de la Torah, que no hubieras recibido si no fuera por la Torah. Si, 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 si es cierto lo que está agarrando. Definitivamente, es cierto. Yes. Es cierto. Cuando, cuando yo iba al cristianismo, uh, Llevaba uh, más que nada a él con chantajes. Si tú vienes, te doy esto. Y, y no es así. Tiene que salir de ellos. ¿Cómo? Estudiando Torah. Es 
es lo único que, que, que nos da una vida y con promesa, porque es cierto que nuestros Yeshua pagó el precio para nuestra salvación, pero si la podemos perder, si nosotros no somos obedientes, um, y hay vida eterna que nos ha prometido, pero tenemos que seguir ahí pegados con, con él, como con su Torah, y, y seguir, si, si, si la dejamos, es bien fácil con el enemigo que tenemos en este mundo, es fácil regresar al, al pasado y regresar al pasado lo dice es peor que, que antes entonces no quiero <laughs> me quedo donde estoy <laughs> definitely clinging on the Torah is yeah definitely what's changed and what helps all those key concepts stay in mind and everything like that um, you know if you don't know Torah and everything like that it just makes it so much harder you know and you gotta be able to do it willingly you know willingly you know um, want to do them you know she used me as an example early on she used to try to drag me to church and things like that but you know it just doesn't work like that when you try to force it down you know you got to open your heart open your mind and really want to do it um, you know Yeshua died on the cross for us you know and opened up doors for us that we could never see without it you know and um, she wouldn't change a thing about it she loves the Torah um, yeah she just yeah Definitely yeah. spot on. This is not Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Get over here. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. You know, one of the things that's just warming my heart right now is that his promises of, you know, every nation and every tongue will worship Yehovah. In the name of Yeshua, we come together and he, the Holy Spirit guides us. It, you know, we're told we won't not need a teacher, preacher, uh, evangelist. The Spirit of the Creator itself will guide you into all truths. Mm -hmm. And so I want to thank you for sharing your experience, your heart. Um, and I would love for you to close us out in prayer. Yeah. Oh, Abba. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Te doy cada momento de mi vida por haberme dado esa oportunidad de haberme salvado, haberme traído a una nueva vida, a una vida que es tan hermosa, caminando contigo y con mi Yeshua. Gracias por esta invitación que me dio el hermano Sean. Uh, gracias por él y bendícelo. Se siente tan lindo estar aquí uh, en, con tu presencia porque tú estás aquí con nosotros, nuestro Yeshua. Y que, que esta conversación, esta plática que tuvimos sea de, de bien para mucha gente, que mucha gente sea bendecida, que no escuchen más mentiras, porque tú eres verdad, tú tocas corazones, toca cada corazón, cada corazón que en este momento está como estaba yo, a punto de suicidio, a punto de hacer cosas indebidas. Toca, toca, Padre mío, te lo pido, en el nombre de tu Hijo Yeshua. Gracias, Padre Eterno, por este día, por esta noche, y que cada minuto siga, sigamos en tu presencia, que no nos alejemos de esa Torah que es tan hermosa cada versículo que está ahí plasmado es tan lindo gracias Ben Shein, Yeshua Hamashiach, Amen Amen Any comments, questions or rebuttals for me? Ah, cualquier pregunta algo que decir contrario de él algo así que tienes para él No veo por él no, 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 no,
porque el Padre te va a usar. And so thank you for doing what you're doing here with this ministry. Um, continue doing it. You know, you're going to reach a lot of lives. And, you know, just God is going to bless you great and heavily for this. And just thank you so much for this. Thank you. Th this is something I have to do. When, when you go back and look at the other episodes, especially episode one, mm -hmm. when I share my experience, strength and hope, because of the demonic oppression that's been throughout my life, I can't go back. I can't. I have been commanded to abide 100%, not part of the time, not when I feel like it. Mm -hmm. No more compromises. My flesh has been beat up by the principalities of the air throughout my whole life, and I have residual damage of, from it. Physical disabilities, mental disabilities, mm -hmm. and the enemy knows how to attack that. Knows how to throw a thought. You're not going to be good enough. This is going to fail. No one, <clears throat> not being good enough, this, that, or enough, not liked, not, especially in my past as an actor and stand-up comic, it's all, for me, it was all about self, about self. <clears throat> Am I going to be funny enough? Uh, will this work or that work? Am I going to be able to memorize my lines? Am I going to be a good enough to, to make it as an actor? Will I get this part? And it's just, it was, it just killed me. I, I w there was no God conscience. There was no spiritual principles. It was just me and my kingdom in China. And, and then it's like, with uh, my goodness, with the sexual addiction and being a photographer, mm -hmm. not a good combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, God bless them, but models are, are quick. I mean, start mm -hmm. taking off her clothes. I mean, I've literally had to tell women, we're, we're not doing that kind of shoot, mm -hmm. but you keep your clothes on. You know, and in the back of my mind, he's like, what do you mean? Take them off. What are you doing? <laughs> it's just like freaking out, you know, and, but I'm, I'm trying, you know, behave. But when I'm not abide, I, it, it just eventually it gets the best of me. And I make poor decisions. I end up hurting myself and others. So God has commanded me. Do this. You, you, the spirits won't attack you if you are abiding 100% of the time. I mean, if uh, I'm, I am constantly thinking about how to bring talent in that to share their experience, strength, and hope from this love response. <clears throat> and then we got the nonprofit part coming up um, where uh, I wish I had the funds right now. Like if I knew you guys were in a position where like, I don't know how we're going to make rent or the kids need this or not the other thing. We are going to get to a point and it's like, by the way, we want to meet those needs, you know, um, going out to the homeless community and looking for people that are approachable. You know, there are some people that unfortunately their mind is totally gone and, and you can't communicate with them. Uh, but there are some out there, you know, that I can identify with the other Elohims in here. The other gods in here that have come to kill, steal, and destroy, take away their peace, take away their state of, uh, their, their state of mind, cause confusion, hurt, pain, guilt, condemnation. It, that is the same pattern Amen. for everybody, no matter what nationality and where you come from. Amen. Um, Amen. So, Amen. yeah, I, I, I have to do this, and it helps me stay uh, at peace. It helps me knowing that uh, I know what I'm doing is full of life and and it's pure and it's holy and uh, I don't want to go back. I can't. Amen. So Amen. thank you for coming on the show and helping me. We're, we're going to have uh, in a future episode, we're going to have just you come back. We're going to talk to you, Amen. Uh, your your lovely wife. We're going to talk to her. Amen. Uh, we're going to talk to you both because one of the things I want to focus on is married couples in the Torah. Um, it's something that can make a break. I've seen people. Um, uh, after 18 years of being married, um, my ex-wife and children, you know, were very much part of Torah. Um, yeah, it, it's just, um, I, it, it, and it didn't last, you know. Uh, it's one of the things about Torah, it shines the light on the sin and the darkness in you. Do you want to keep it? Do you want to manifest that and, and, and magnify that? Or do you want to turn away from that and come to the marvelous light where there's healing, restoration, and peace? A God that is not the author of confusion. The God of rest. And so it, it's that black and white. And, you know, I, it definitely manifested the darkness in me. And 
the spirits jumped on me just like it did my family and we got torn apart from it. You know, it's a really an individual walk as well as a corporate, you know. Um, so I, I appreciate you coming back and, and, and sharing your experience, strength and hope and with you and your family and, and the walk. Definitely, definitely. Looking forward to it. Amen. I am Yokanon, your host for Blood Testimonies. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.